times have changed since the era of the 1950s housewife, today's women live in a different world, and that's reflected in the age at which many decide to have children. Figures from the Office for National Statistics showed that back in 1991, almost 10,000 women over 40 gave birth. Last year, that figure had risen to almost 30,000. The trend for giving birth later in life continues to grow, with a sharp rise in babies born to women in their 30s and 40s last year. The independent research group, the Social Issues Research Centre, claims this trend could be partly explained by the fact that more women are going out to work. Just under a quarter of the UK's mothers had a full or part-time job in 1971. Today, it's more like two-thirds. But there is some cause to think that the mothers of yesteryear may have had the right idea. That's because health officials say the risk of miscarriage increases with age. Uh, so when is the right time to have a baby? It's a question we've asked a few times on this programme. We can get more answers though. To discuss this, we're joined by journalist Joanna Moorhead, who has four daughters of her own. Morning to you. And a Charles Kingsland, a consultant gynaecologist at Liverpool Women's Hospital. Morning as well. And let's just go through sort of history, because it has changed an enormous amount in the last hundred years or so, when women are having children. It's changed massively. A um, hundred years ago, a woman would have a first period when she was 18, and she would then have a first child when she was 19. Then she'd spend the next few years having babies, miscarrying, breastfeeding, developing illnesses, and then she'd, she'd be dead at 43. So dead um, at the age that... That was the life expectancy. Women having children. Uh, yeah. Whereas um, uh, nowadays, uh, a young girl would expect to have a first period at 12. The difference over the past 100 years is the improvement in nutrition and um, medical care. But because we have now learned to control our fertility, women now have, a, a, ha, have more decisions that they can make. They're educated, they're going to vote, and one day, who knows, might even have a female prime minister. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, um, what has to, because of the enormous social yeah. changes that women uh, uh, befall women, one of the things that they have to do is to plan their families more carefully. And quite often, these the decisions to start a family are delayed. So nowadays, the average woman will um, have her first child in the United Kingdom at the age of 31. But interestingly, a child born in a hospital um, or a home um, today will have a life expectancy of 100. Mm -hmm. So the, so the life changes have been massive in just a relatively short space of time. So Joanna, give us your, the potted history of your, because you've got four, four daughters. I've got four daughters, that's right. What age were you when you had your first? I had my first at 29 and then another one at, uh, at 31, another one at 35 I think, and then my last one at just before 40. And actually interesting, I mean, I, I, I wanted, I always knew I wanted four children um, and I thought I was starting quite young at 29, but actually I was lucky to, to manage to have the four children I wanted because I had a run of miscarriages in the middle. Uh, and and uh, I think that's something that women don't think about, that there may be, they may encounter uh, problems that they're not expecting, even when they start young, but certainly if they're, if they're waiting until later, you're much more likely to have problems. Yeah, and, and obviously there's a medical side to this, there's a social side to this. So you, you had a plan, and you, it involved, it, it was linked, balanced with your career, so you were working for your career, what, in your 20s, and then you planned. Yeah, I, I think I did, and I think um, I, I think I hoped and expected that I'd be able to pick my career up because I'm a freelance journalist though I knew I could um, carry on working through having children and then and then my career could become more important when they're older and that's what I think has happened uh, and I think it's a lot harder where women are working in industries where they, they really have to be and obviously they have to get into a, a structure that let's face it has been designed really for, for the male life cycle and not for women because for women it's very it would be very suitable for us to have our babies in our 20s and then really pick up our careers big time in our 30s and then be sailing through our 40s and 50s. Um, just, I want you both to address this point, and lots of people are making this. Rachel says um, she's always annoyed by the assumption that older mums choose career. Actually, she says she didn't meet the man she wanted kids with until her mid 30s. So, you know, people do say that, but it's interesting, isn't it? Because we can't, you know, if we look back to when my parents were having babies in the, in the early 60s, you know, people just managed to find the person who was going to be their life partner around the age of 20, 21, 22. There's obviously an expectation in our society, uh, and I'm not saying it's an easy thing to get over, but, but I was really pleased to see that a girl is pregnant at 24. You know, I think there's a big herd instinct about when we start to have our children, we start, tend to start to have them when other people uh, around us, like us, are having their babies. And I think it's great that someone like Adele is, is showing that, you know, I mean, having a baby is always going to be 
start your family, there, there are lots of difficulties you can't possibly begin to imagine when you have your first child. And I think that's, that's going to be the case whenever you have your child. So, in other words, whenever you plunge into that swimming pool, you're going to go through choppy waters at some point. And I think it's a shame that people are leaving it until they're, until they're now often in their later thirties and encountering problems that wouldn't have been there when they were Well, when they Professor, you must have this, do you have, you must have people come to you all the time who are in that position, maybe late thirties, maybe early forties, yeah. saying to you, you know, here I am, yeah. you know, can, can I have children, help me? Does, yeah. does, you, does a little bit of you want to say you should have thought about this earlier? I mean, it's not your position to preach to people, obviously, but I just wonder how, how that leaves you. The biological facts are that women are a, <coughs> an egg store. They have their full complement of eggs before they're born, and actually by the time they're born, they're, they are losing their eggs. And um, eggs, you can't make them, you only lose them. So eggs get older with you, and that's why a woman's fertility will decline. It declines quite rapidly over the age of 35, so it's relatively more difficult to conceive at that sort of age, but also you have to remember that the, the, the rates of miscarriage are higher and the rates of complications are higher because egg quality tends not to be as good. Of course, many, many women will have, will have um, um, very easy um, pregnancies and births and get pregnant quite easily in their 30s, but it's less likely. And women, when, once they reach the age of 40, 50% of women can't reproduce even if they wanted to. Of course, a lot of women don't want to. But of course, now, now there are so many more choices, life choices for women, that's a good thing. One of the things that they can do is, or, or they sometimes are compelled to do, is to delay their families for, for other very important reasons. And yes, I would say it would be ideal to have your babies in your mid-twenties, but life's not always like that, is it? Very interesting discussion. On that note, on that philosophical note. <laughs> really Thank you. I thank you both. Are we